In a previous video, I mentioned superfluids and said that I wanted to make a video about them because of how cool they are. So here it is. Also, please stick around till the end because I have some important stuff to address. Superfluids are generally fluids with zero viscosity, which means that they can flow with zero friction whatsoever. I'll get to the implications of this later, but this behavior only arises at the lowest of temperatures. And in this video, I'll focus on two main substances or states of matter in which this behavior arises, Bose-Einstein and fermionic condensates. So let's start with the Bose-Einstein condensate, or BEC. In order for a substance to exhibit quantum behavior at a macroscopic scale, like superfluidity, you need to cool it down to extremely low temperatures. And I'm talking near absolute zero. However, to do this, almost all of the particles in the substance have to occupy the lowest possible energy quantum states. And the Pauli exclusion principle forbids this, because it states that no two fermions can occupy the same quantum state. However, here's the thing, because we can use bosons for this. And bosons are not only the carrier particles of the, of the different forces, like photons or gluons, because bosons are defined as particles which have an integer spin instead of a fractional one. And it just so happens that if you sum all of the spins in a helium-4 nucleus, you get zero, an integer number, which means that helium-4 is a boson. So, now that we've got our bosons, we just need to cool them down to nearly zero Kelvin. This is a bit hard because quantum mechanics seems to forbid us from reaching absolute zero, mainly due to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which basically says that if particles are perfectly steady, their momentum just goes crazy and vice versa. But it can be done through techniques like laser cooling and magnetic field trapping. Laser cooling basically works by reducing the momenta of the atoms in the substance through the emission of photons. But feel free to research the gory details if you feel interested. And the result is fascinating. The wave functions of the helium-4 atoms interfere constructively to form a single, collective, coherent wave function at a macroscopic scale which can exhibit macroscopic quantum behavior. And this leads to phenomena like superfluidity. So, that was Paul Einstein condensate. Now, let's get into fermionic condensate. They're really similar, so let me just explain them briefly. As I already said, particles with a fractional spin, so a non-integer spin, have to obey the Pauli exclusion principle and therefore cannot occupy that lowest energy state. However, particles can be forced to combine their spins to make an integer spin particle. These pairs of particles are called Cooper pairs. And as an example, if you have a group of electrons, you can cool them down until they form Cooper pairs. These Cooper pairs can now occupy the lowest energy quantum state and become a fermionic condensate made of fermionic particles in Cooper pairs. Now, this is really cool because in, in this specific example of electrons, the electrons behave like a superfluid, but when they are inside of a solid material, that material becomes a superconductor because these electrons can now flow with zero viscosity, which means that electricity can go through those materials with zero resistance. And this is extremely useful but it is unfortunately not yet mainstream. So what are the special abilities and properties of superfluids? Well, a really cool thing about them is that if you get a frictionless container, put a superfluid inside and stir it up, that fluid would keep spinning infinitely. Of course, it would have to be in a vacuum because otherwise there would be air friction, but this is actually perpetual motion. It doesn't break any laws of physics because it's not actually generating energy, but perpetual motion machines have been sought after by many engineers across all of history. And this is a perfectly possible one. 
Of course, good luck finding a frictionless container. Another cool property they have is that unlike other normal fluids, which when attracted to the walls of the container, they just stay there due to their viscosity and surface tension, maybe forming a curve. Look at it in maybe a beaker or water. You can see that it goes up a little bit near the wall of the container. But superfluids can just climb up the wall, get out of the container and mess up everything. So yeah, if you're gonna make a superfluid, make sure to leave the lid on the container, otherwise you're gonna make a mess. Actually, it doesn't really matter because superfluids can go through microscopic pores and cracks in apparently solid materials. So you can get a cup and the superfluid will probably just fall through. So yeah, you're gonna make, make a mess anyway. <laughs> and for the aforementioned superconductors, the possibilities are really exciting. Because not only can you make wires and circuits with zero electrical resistance, and therefore electricity would travel much faster than with current wires, but they also behave in really interesting ways with magnetic fields. If you place a, super, a superconductor near a magnetic field, the magnetic field lines will go around the superconductor, kind of trapping it there, but some of the magnetic field lines will go through it. And that is enough to lock the superconductor in place, which means that it can levitate. And if you move the, the magnet to which it is connected to, it will move with it. And this technology is actually being used in magnetic levitating trains and it is really exciting, to say the least. So yeah, that was a little overview of what happens when you cool things down to near absolute zero temperatures. Now I have something really exciting to address. We finally reached 100 subscribers. Now, I was actually pretty confused as to how my subscribers had doubled and almost tripled in the span of a day, and how one of my videos has gotten uh, one, almost 1,000 views. So I investigated it, and it turns out that someone had posted one of my videos on a website called FARC, asking people specifically to subscribe. And so thank you whoever did that, because it really worked. I, I owe you one. Now there was actually a pretty interesting discussion about my channel in the comments at FARC, and many of the comments were positive, and I appreciate them, but I feel like I need to address some of the other comments, because apparently, some people think that my narcissistic parents are making me learn by heart a script to tell it on camera to gain attention from the internet and profit from me and that I'm in a professional studio with a professional light and, this, and that this is child abuse. So, so yeah, obviously this is not like, th like that. Now I'm actually using my window light right now, but the lamp that the people refer to is this one, I think. Um, it's, it's just a lamp, actually. It's just hang my iPad here to record myself because that's all I have. So yeah, it's like a low budget tripod. But no, no, I, I don't have such things. This is not a professional studio, obviously. And the videos are not scripted. They're based on my understanding and my research for each video. And I make I made my channel because I really like science and because I really like talking about science. And I hope you understand that. So thank you again for reaching 100 subscribers. Let's continue so that this channel can keep growing and more people can learn about science. And I'll see you in the next video.